overwhelming number of failed marriages cite financial troubles as a major factor in their breakup. This is no surprise, because the way we use our time and money reflects our values. And without a strong set of shared values, marriages drift apart. But dealing with finances together can bring a couple closer. We've worked with a lot of couples who are in financial troubles and in debt, and we've found that there are seven vows that they need to make to each other about their finances in order to be successful. The first one is to start now, start young. Every seven years you delay starting a savings plan cuts in half your ultimate net worth in retirement. And there's no better time to get your finances on a firm footing than right now. The second principle is that you have to work together as a team on your budget. A budget is your shared values, and shared activities can help you build and integrate your marriage and keep it in sync with the rest of your life. Couples that share activities get pulled together rather than being pulled in different directions. And the more opportunities to form, form shared values, the better the marriage. A budget is simply a spending plan, and you have to decide what you value in your life and where you want to spend it. It has to add up to what your take-home pay is, otherwise you're going to be deficit spending. The third principle is that a budget actually gives you more freedom, not less. Couples without a budget can and often do fight about every dollar spent. But couples with a budget do not get concerned about spending until a category goes over the budgeted amount. Having decided how much money the family can spend on clothes, for example, it doesn't matter if he might want to spend money on a lot of inexpensive clothes and she prefers a few nice pieces, or vice versa. So long as the spending doesn't go over the budget, you don't need to fight about it. The next principle is to always pay yourself first. The best way to achieve your financial goals is by moderating your spending and staying on track with your savings needs. We recommend saving at least 15% of your take-home pay. To pay yourself first, set up an automatic monthly transfer from your checking account or maybe even before it comes out of your payroll to an investment account where your contribution is automatically invested in a diversified portfolio. Saving just a few hundred dollars a month each year at market rates of return will compound to a million dollars in retirement. Money makes money, and the money that makes money makes even more money. The next thing is to limit the amount you spend unless you both agree. One big mistake can undo months of frugality and sacrifice. We call these budget busters. Budget buster is anything which is a large portion of your take-home pay. And you need to set a limit, which you both agree on, so that you don't spend over that limit without going and talking to your spouse first. When a couple is just starting out, this dollar limit may be very small, perhaps only $50. And as you grow together, you can anticipate each other's wisdom, and then you can increase this discretionary spending limit. The next principle is to make sure that you don't use credit poorly. You need to agree on how you're going to use credit. Both of you are liable for the, the credit card bills, and so both of you need to agree. If one person is uncomfortable using credit, neither should use credit. And you need to separate your needs from your wants. We really need little more than food, shelter, and clothing to survive. And it's easy to fall into the misconception that we deserve nice things because we work hard, but you also deserve to grow wealthy. And wealth is what you save, not what you spend. The textbook definition, in fact, of capital is deferred consumption. And deferring consumption means not buying it now, waiting until later. Wealthy people learn to value financial security over immediate gratification. It's also important to enjoy a frivolous slice. Both members of a marriage should have a slice of the budget, which is completely at their discretion and they can spend any way they want without challenge. But it needs to be a small slice, perhaps only a half percent of your total budget. If one member collects ceramic pink pigs and the other collects signed collectible hockey cards, they can both enjoy their frivolous expenditures without jeopardizing the budget items that are more, that are more important to the family. Couples that learn to live proportionally maintain their balance whether they're rich or poor. They include some fun, some gifting, and some investing 
to reflect their shared family values.